What's up, Trade Hackers? Today is Friday, July 19th. Hope everybody had a great week. Welcome to this week's video review exclusively for pro members. Before we jump into the alerts, let's talk about who got caught being hot in the community. Every week, we like to recognize one member of the Trade Hacker community for helping other traders. This week goes to our friend Chi Kong So. Hopefully, I'm saying that right, Chi. Uh, Chi's been in our community for quite a while. Every day, he's cheering comments, I notice. Uh, just making little little comments here and there. This week started trading some, sh uh, share, excuse me, sharing some trade ideas. And uh, so keep up the good work, Chi. Love having you in the Trade Hacker family. Congrats, you got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. What a crazy day. Uh, and actually week, it's been really quiet as far as the market's just been kind of moving sideways as far as the stock market goes. And then today it was up about, I don't know, six or seven points, actually almost 10 points at one point, the S&P, and then closed down 26. So apparently there was some uh, news. I assume what the media is touting is the reason is the uh, Iran seized a British oil tanker. So when the market didn't like that and, uh, and turned around. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully that's a good sign into next week of a little bit of down movement as well as some implied volatility spiking, uh, definitely would help our portfolio. Need some, we've got some, we're carrying short delta right now. We're about four to one on our short delta versus theta ratio. Uh, for, the, for all you new members who've just joined, when we are constructing our portfolio, we like to keep a little bit of short bias. We like to keep a little bit of short delta based on uh, in a ratio based on our, our overall portfolio, beta weighted to the S&P 500. So we want to take all of our different positions and make them into basically all apples and compare those to the rest of our positions so we're not comparing all different apples and oranges and pineapples and different things. So apples to apples, we want to compare it to the S&P and that way we get an idea of our overall portfolios and which way we are biased and by doing that, uh, gives us an idea of our overall direction. And we like to be a little bit short because the market likes to take the stairs up and the elevator down, as we saw today. And so that's where we're at. And we're about four to one on our ratio. So for every four short deltas that we have, we have one theta. And theta is our daily time decay. So that gives us an idea of how much premium we are short versus how short our overall directional portfolio is. So we've got some more information on that on our blog. If you go to our blog and look at how to trade options like a professional or how to delta hedge your portfolio, uh, search for those in our blog and you'll, you'll understand a little bit more about that concept. Uh, but let's jump in. Starting with our first alert on Monday the 15th. We uh, closed out an iron condor that we put on on X SPX. So we, we just released our newest strategy course, which is all about trading weekly options on the indices. Specifically, what we'll be doing as far as alerts is on the SPX. So this is our weekly iron condor trade that we had put on the previous week. We closed that out. Ended up taking a loss on this one. Uh, just never, it just didn't stay in our range. So we closed that out, took a loss on that one. Next trade, we did a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we had a long put vertical that we've been holding for some of that short delta exposure that I just talked about. And when we get down into the week of expiration, we before the options expire, we wanna either close these or roll them out. And we went ahead and rolled this out to extend duration out to 32 days. And we adjusted our strikes to accommodate for where price is currently. So if we go to Apple on our uh, Analyze tab, you can see since we did this roll, price has moved down. So we've gotten back some of the profit since we did that roll and just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit this trade. Next trade was an opening trade in Baidu. So Baidu's got earnings coming up on July 30th. And implied volatility has been declining as well as price has really been consolidating in a very narrow range. And so with this trade, we're really looking for price just to break out one direction or another. And so that's what we want because typically in anticipation of an upcoming earnings announcement, 
implied volatility is going to expand. And then if we can get price movement, uh, decent price movement out of the range in either direction, that's what we're looking for in a long straddle before earnings. So if we look at Baidu, uh, Baidu did make a, a move a little bit higher today. And so you can see we're down a little bit on this trade. If you look at where we're at going into earnings, here's what's interesting is we've just, I mean, we put this on hoping that implied volatility would expand and implied volatility is just really contracted. And so hopefully going into next week, we get some expansion going into earnings as well as a little bit more price movement and, and that'll benefit our trade. So that's what we're looking for into next week, but we'll definitely close this out before earnings on 7.30. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Goldman Sachs. So this is one that we put on for some short delta exposure. We put on a long put vertical and uh, very similar to the other one is this was down to three days to expiration and we rolled this out to August as well. Adjusted our strikes and just keeping that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So if we take a look at where that's at now, you can see again, kind of like the other one has come down since that roll. We're up about $300 since that roll, but just looking for some more downside before we do anything there. Uh, so what we might do is, is we may either close this one out if we continue to get some downside action, or we may even roll it out to September to extend duration, capture that credit, and continue to keep that short delta. But we're, we'll see where we're at with our overall delta theta ratio at that point. So that's where we're at on GS. Next trade was a opening trade. We sold a strangle in eBay. So eBay had, with implied volatility as low as it's been in all the indices like SPY, IWM, and, and a lot of the markets across the board, you've got to start getting a little bit creative and looking for other opportunities. And one way to do that is to look for stocks that have earnings announcements. So in this case, we looked at eBay. But instead of doing the uh, nearest options, which at that time had two days to expiration, would, which would be a true earnings related play, we ended up just selling the August, which had 30 days to expiration. By doing that, you're getting more credit. You're widening out your wings. Uh, excuse me. You're widening, widening out your spread, and, uh, and you're hoping for price to stay within that range. And basically, you're just treating it as a core monthly option trade because what will happen is after they announce earnings, even though you're in the strikes, even though you're in the cycle with 30 days, you're going to get that IV crush. It's not going to be as dramatic as if you traded that two days to expiration, but you're still going to get some contraction. And it did exactly what we wanted. We, we ended up uh, uh, closing this out for over 35% of max profit within just 24 hours. And so uh, we are in and out of eBay. Nice trade there. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing it either way. You know, two days to expiration, you're going to have a little bit more, more narrow range. You're going to collect less credit, but your implied volatility crush is going to be greater. So you're going to get that profit quicker. But with 30 days, you're going to widen out, give a little bit more duration. And we're just looking for uh, positions to put on into our core portfolio. And that's why we chose the 30 days in this case. Uh, excuse me, need to get a drink. All right, uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So another long put vertical that we we're holding, holding for that short delta exposure. And again, we just uh, rolled that from July, which had two days to expiration. In this case, we roll it out to September with 65. Now remember, we typically like to enter trades and stay within that 30 to 60 days, but this is pretty much a directional play. And so I don't mind going out a little bit further in duration to kind of diversify the time frame that we're in these trades. And so that's what we did here. And we adjusted our strikes from 78, 73 uh, down to, uh, excuse me, up to 85, 80, and just extended that duration, kept that short delta in our exposure, uh, skipped out on the August cycle and went straight to September. And so let's take a look at XLK, moved down slightly. It's pretty close to where we rolled it, up, uh, up a little bit of money in it uh, since that roll, but pretty close to where we, where we rolled that. Now, Keep in mind, uh, remember when, when we're rolling these positions, uh, you know, we could just close them out and take a loss. But in this case, we want that short delta exposure. I mean, this market's been very strong. And so just to play the cyclicality of the market, 
we wanted to keep short delta. And so we could have closed this out, but then we would just be going and looking for another short delta position. So what we like to do is we like to stick with certain positions and use them almost as hedges and continue to, to roll those. And if, you know, eventually the market will get that cyclicality. We might get some downside action and then we can choose to you know, get some of that profit back and or close it at that point. But at this point, uh, but at this point XLK is one of our short positions that we've been rolling and we will continue to do so. And that, that's the other reason we, we chose to go out all the way out to September is because we know we're going to keep this for some time. And so no reason to roll out to August and then a little while later have to roll out to September along with diversifying our, our cycles. That, that, that's part of the, uh, the concept there. Next trade, closing trade in IWM. So we've had this iron condor on for quite a while. We've been kind of adding positions, taking some off, rolling some, going on and on. Well, you know, at, at some point, you know, we at this point, we just, IWM, the implied volatility, the IV percentile is down to 24. Uh, we had an iron condor on. Um, and so, and, you know, you don't, we don't really roll full iron condors. Uh, so in this case, we just opted to close it. We took a loss. Um, you know, after, after some time, sometimes it just makes sense to close out trades, especially if the implied volatility is low and it wasn't giving us any specific directional Delta that we needed. We did, we certainly didn't need any more short Delta. We could have closed out the put vertical side and just rolled the call vertical side. But, uh, in this case, we just, we just took it off and took a loss and, uh, and, and now we have that capital. So if implied volatility does spike next week we have more capital to put on some additional positions. So that, that was the case in, in uh, IWM. Now, for those who just put this on and didn't have all the past Iron Condor pieces on, we booked a really not, nice profit on this piece. Uh, in fact, it was about 85% of max profit. We were just trying to squeeze a bunch out before we closed it out. Worked out well, and we closed that piece out. So uh, we are out of IWM at this point. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. Again, this was down to one day's expiration. We went ahead and rolled out to September with 64, adjusted our strikes accordingly. So we take a look at DIA. We've got two different sets. This is the one in September that we just rolled right here, right where we rolled it, no PL yet. <clears throat> and then we've also got this other set that we had already rolled out to August. You can see prices is, is well within range. Uh, down slightly from where we rolled it, but just can, again looking for some downside uh, direction to benefit that trade, both of those trades. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added another SPX iron condor. Uh, in this case, this one had eight days to expiration. Remember from our course, we like to do it between seven and nine days. In this case, we did it right in the middle, uh, just like just like we teach, we'll exit with one day's to expiration, or if price gets to a point where it's, it's over 50% of our initial credit. So we collected a credit of 2165, take half of that, add it to that number, and that's where that 32, it's actually 3247, 3245 is what you get. Uh, but once we get up to a price of about 3240, if we get to that point, that's where we'll exit. It's kind of a theoretical stop loss. Now, I've had some questions about, hey, you know, why don't we manage these early like we do the rest of our trades? And the reason is, is because with these weekly options, we have this short duration. We've got this gamma risk that we have to be more aware of that's a lot more severe than our monthly options. And what that means is smaller moves in the underlying index can, can move your P&L a lot greater. That's what gamma is. It's that, it's that risk of movement. And so uh, when you have this, these short duration options, they, they work a lot differently. And so that's why we created this whole strategy, uh, this whole course around the strategy of these short term options, where the most optimal way to do this is to exit with one day to expiration or on the losing side, if it gets to uh, a price that's 50% of your initial credit. So you add your 50% of this number to your initial credit, and that's where this came from. So that's how we manage these. If you manage them early, your overall profits over time are not going to be as good. It's a very good uh, strategy, very profitable, but you have to manage it like this. You can't manage it like you do our core monthly income uh, strategies. 
anyway, so that's the opening. Let's go to the, let's take a look at where that's at. It's pretty centered here. We're up about 137 bucks since we put that on. So just playing the waiting game into next week. Hopefully it kind of bebops around, stays in our range, and we can book a winner in, uh, in that one. All right, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had a short call vertical that was originally part of our iron condor. In this case, we, ride, uh, we rolled from July with one day just out to August. Again, there's nothing wrong if we wanted to roll this out to September. But in this case, we're just, we're just, we're just kind of diversifying our time frames. We're diver diversifying our roll. So in this case, we just rolled out to August and, uh, and adjusted our strikes accordingly. And so let's take a look at SPY. Take a look here. It's pretty close to where we rolled at. We've, we've gotten back a little bit of money since we've done that roll, but pretty close. And you can see we're in August in this one. Next trade was a closing trade, another SPX weekly trade. In this case, we had a double calendar that we put on last week with just one day to expiration. We needed to exit, so we went ahead and closed that out. And it ended up scratching out a small winner. Uh, Obviously, if we, you know, if we held on a little bit longer, the market moved up the next day and we could have booked an even better winner. But hey, that's hindsight trading. You don't want to do that. Be mechanical. That's exactly what we did. And we went ahead and, and uh, scratched out a small winner on that trade. Next trade, closing trade in FXI. So similar to IWM, we had, a, uh, we had an iron condor in FXI. We made several adjustments. I uh, got down to the point with this one with just one day to expiration. We had a remaining short call vertical on in FXI, and we could have rolled. Uh, we weren't necessarily at that point looking to continue to keep more short delta. And with implied volatility super low at two on the IV percentile, uh, we ended up just closing this. We had a small profit on the trade overall, so we just went ahead and booked that one. Next trade was a closing trade in eBay. I already mentioned that. So we put that earnings, uh, we put that trade on right before earnings when implied volatility is inflated. Very next day, booked over 35% of max profit. Got that IV crush, uh, which, which gave us just kind of a nice quick profit on that one. So good trade in eBay. And lastly, we did a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is the S&P 500 futures. This is another one that we've just been keeping for that short delta. It's a long put vertical. And we went, this one, uh, today was the last trading day. And listen, we don't, we don't like to keep our trades all the way down to expiration day. But with remember with futures, options on futures, you can't get assigned. The only time that you get assigned is if you hold those after the options actually expire, which would be after the market closes today on Friday. So we have all the way up until expiration day to do something, and that's what we did on this. We just held it all the way up and then went ahead and rolled it out to September and uh, and adjusted our strikes to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So if we look at ES, you can see that that's the one that zeroed out that we rolled, and here's the one. we've. And then after the market's down move today, we already gained back a couple hundred bucks after the roll which is good, and then we're just holding that for some more downside exposure. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with oil. See, we've got this strangle on, got a little bit of profit, definitely not enough to take off yet, looking for about 30, 40, 50% of max profit before we book that one. I just showed you ES. Gold, so we've got this short call vertical that was originally part of our iron condor in gold, looking for some downside movement in that. These options expire next week. We've got six days. And so we'll look to either roll or close that next week. In addition to that, we've already got another centered iron condor right here, which has got a little bit of profit. And this one is out in September. What TOSS displays is September, but it's the option cycle with 39 days. And so we've got both of those pieces in gold. Natty Gas, Natty Gas has been weak this week. A uh, big downslide in Natty Gas. We were hoping for just a little bit of a pop higher. We were considering closing one of our one of our pieces in that gas, but unfortunately, it turned on us, went down. So you can see prices has, has moved down out of range here. If we look at just our calls, uh, you can see we still got a decent amount of premium left in those. So we're not looking to adjust down yet at this point, uh, but definitely looking for a rebound. Uh, back into range on Natty Gas. ZB, 30-year bonds. We've got this adjusted short strangle here. 
uh, you can see it's it's been just kind of hanging out right here in this range. I mean, it's bounced down, bounced up, it's just kind of bebopping around in this range. Uh, what well, I'd like to get another another piece of this trade on. And if you look at the options here, we've got 35 days left in that in the in the cycle that we're in. If uh, if we look at the continuous contract here, the next cycle out would have 63. So next week we're getting down to our within 60 days to expiration. So we'll probably look to add another piece out in the next cycle, kind of centered around the current price. Now if we make a sharp move lower and we're centered we're not going to add another piece. But if we stay around here or move a little bit higher, we'll look to add a centered strangle around the current price in ZB. So that's the plan there. Uh, wheat. We've got two iron condors here in wheat. Uh, on this one here, price had moved out of range, but there's still a, a decent little amount of premium left in that untested side, in the call vertical side. So we just held on and now and then later in the day, price moved up over 2% back into range. So we're just holding steady there. And then the other piece we have still in the same cycle is another iron condor. And you can see it's pretty centered. We've got some profit, but not enough to take off. So just playing the waiting game in wheat. Hopefully we get some uh, price ping pong action and we can uh, book profits in both of those. Apple. Uh, we've got a we've had a little bit of down movement here later in the week, giving us a profit since we've rolled this trade. Still down overall, but uh, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. I mentioned Baidu, John Deere DE. We rolled this one and just looking for some downside to benefit that. DIA. I mentioned that one. We've got two sets of short call verticals. Goldman Sachs. Uh, I, think, I, I think I mentioned this one. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've already moved down significantly since we rolled that one. So just waiting for a little bit more downside before doing anything there. Intel. So we've got this adjusted strangle. Earnings are on 725. Price is hanging out right here. If we can get some down movement and, uh, and get to a point of profit, we're down about, about $200 on this trade right now. So if we can, if we can move down and, and get in a profit before earnings, we will. Most likely we won't, and so we will hold this through earnings and and just uh, you know continue to manage as necessary. When implied volatility gets crushed after earnings, assuming price stays within our range, we might be able to just take it off for a profit. Uh, if not, it, we will continue to manage as we always do mechanically. IYR, we've got this real estate ETF. Price came back nicely in a range today. We were, you can see this theoretical position we were looking to set up and add to this position uh, back when price was around 89. Uh, we didn't because I'd rather wait until next week until these options get out until under 60 days and we'll add it in September to, to diversify our, uh, our, our uh, cycles there. Uh, but So that's where we're at on IYR. Implied volatility has stayed decently high. It's at 51 on the IV percentile. And so hopefully we get some continuation to the downside in IYR and we may not add to it. We may just book this profit if it uh, stays in our range and we get to a point of about 30% or so, or we, we may look to add to it. We'll see where we're at with everything. QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals, both of which are in August, very similar strikes. These are both of them combine, combined. So you just looking for a little bit of downside movement in QQQ. SMH, uh, I got a question on this one here. We've got uh, in the community, I've got price out here near the break even. Uh, the question in the community is why not just close this for a loss? Um, well, I mean, you could if that's what you want to do, if that's what fits better in your portfolio. But we've got a tiny bit of premium left in our put side. But if price continues higher, we're just going to stay mechanical and roll our puts up to about the 30 delta. And then we've got this piece here. It's kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. It has breached our short strike, uh, but there's, again, there's uh, still a tiny bit of, of premium left in those short puts. Uh, but into next week, if price continues higher, we're just going to roll up our puts. Uh, we're, we're not looking to close this out. We are just going to continue to collect those credits and play the cyclicality of the market. I mean, you've got this massive move to the upside. You know, at some point, SMH is going to cycle down. And so we don't, we don't want to just, if we get a big move against us, we're not just going to close it out. That 
you know, that just takes away the advantage of rolling. You know, you roll your puts up. If, if, you, if you get an extended move in one direction to the upside, you roll your puts up. If you get an extended move to the downside, you roll your calls down. And over time, that's going to be the most profitable way to trade. You're not going to, you're not going to be better off just closing out the trade. Now, are there cases when there's absolute astronomical moves in one direction where it would have been able, would have been better to just close it out? Sure. But that's, that's, we're playing the probabilities and that's not the game. Um, and so again, if you want to close those out, if they get to a certain area that you can want to call uncle, fine, that's great. And, and in fact, if your account is smaller and you need to do that just to eliminate large losses, then, then that's what you should do. But you know, with, with, Putting on positions, booking winners, and managing your deltas and managing the portfolio like we do on a thing like SMH, we're going to continue to manage this and roll up our puts and collect credits, roll out to the next cycle. That's how we manage, just like we teach in the course. I mentioned SPX. I mentioned SPY, I believe. Yep. Uh, Walmart. So this is another uh, pre-earnings trade. We put this on as a long strangle. So price was kind of in between strikes when we put this on. So we just widen these out a little bit. We manage it just like a long straddle, just like a pre-earnings long straddle. So in this case, we're looking for implied volatility to expand going into earnings and a decent move in direction, either one way or another. If you take a look at a chart of Walmart, I mean, this thing has just been grinding, grinding, grinding higher. So I didn't want to put on a pre-earnings long call just because of this extended move higher. But uh, just put on a long straddle. Now we've gotten the expansion we wanted in implied volatility, but we just haven't gotten the price movement. Price is kind of consolidated here. So we need a price move, a big price move down or big price move up leading up to earnings, which we've got a long time. We've got until 8.15, August 15th, before that happens. So that's the plan in Walmart. And then last one's XOK. I already talked about that one. So that's it. Everybody have a great weekend, and hopefully we get some of this continuation to the downside in stocks that we saw late in the day on Friday. We can. That's not only going to help our uh, current portfolio, which has short delta, but it's also going to provide new opportunities to add positions. So that's the plan. Look forward to next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you then.